All right, we're back. Just did another light build. We can kind of see some of the uh, details that are coming in now. So uh, this wall mesh is looking way too big. Um, the, the light map here is making that shadow look really chunky. Same with over here uh, on the floor. Again, we'll fix that. Up here, it's not too bad. Uh, we kind of like what that's doing with the skylight. Um, down here, reflection's still going every which way, but we'll get around to that. So first things first, I want to bring in some assets from some other projects that I know have worked on in the past. So uh, it would be good uh, for yourself to just have an assets project running um, just, just in the background so you can occasionally keep all of your assets together. This is a project I'm working on. Uh, I'll, I'll probably circle back to this project at some point. But uh, here we have uh, some materials that I brought together from a group of different projects. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and find all of these. Um, I'll start with this one. If you find the material, uh, you have to right click it here in your browser and then you right click and choose asset actions and then migrate. And sure, let's save. Yep. Okay. Okay. And then we uh, just bring that to uh, our folder. No, nope, not that one. Here we go. Uh, so you have to go to the content folder of the, of the, ma uh, the, excuse me, the project that you're trying to migrate to. So we'll go ahead, we'll do that, yes. Okay, now if we go to our other project, uh, what do we call that? We call that Metal Brass. Metal Brass. And there we go, we have that material now. Uh, we can migrate anything, uh, like we were saying before, to a uh, newer version of the engine, um, not older. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a couple of these too. Take that, migrate. Please do. That's a very interesting asset. This is actually taken from photographic reference for um, the roughness, uh, diffuse, and then also the uh, ambient occlusion. So it's it's very handy, nice to have. Very photo real too. Let's take this one as well. And then these are some trees that I had made in Speed Tree, uh, a, a program a uh, third-party program to make uh, foliage and vegetation a long time ago. They're not not—they're not great. I was just trying to learn the program, but uh, I'll go ahead and bring these as well. Uh, hey, here's a bunch. Maybe I didn't make these. I don't have the uh, attention span to do however many trees that is. If you're trying to migrate... Uh, assets that are 4k or 8k textures uh, it can take a while especially some of the open world assets made by uh, epic go ahead and migrate all of those there we go and lastly i was looking around in here i always like to include these uh these come on come on <laughs> okay that's bird okay uh this blueprint for birds i'm not sure what project this is from this may be the open world assets as well, um, but it's, it's really nice. It helps to add the sense of scale and uh, uh, some of the atmosphere you get in a realistic environment. So we're going to migrate that in as well. We're not going to go too much into what exactly is going on in this blueprint. Just that, just that we want it. We want to we wanna have it. So we're going to bring that. And we can just go ahead and close and open our project we're working on here. Great. And uh, let's go ahead and search for bird. Grab that blueprint for the birds. And I, I kind of want to have the user be able to look up through the skylight and occasionally see the birds in there. And and uh, it's, it's a nice wow moment. Yeah, I'm not sure what kind of birds those are. Is that a seagull? I wonder where this building is. <laughs> yeah, oh, look at that go. Cool. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, before we add materials to this floor, I'd like to break it apart a little bit and get some nicer light maps. Uh, this is a really important step, especially if you're going for photorealistic work, and uh, you're working with models from Revit, uh, SketchUp, <laughs> or really any 3D modeling program. This is a very important step. So we'll take it uh, really slow, and we'll probably do it a couple times for some bigger meshes that we have. So we'll go ahead. Uh, if you select it and select control B it will find where it is in your content browser and instead of migrate here we're going to actually export the mesh 
And let's go to, uh, I have this parent folder here. Let's just make an FBX folder and we'll export this mesh called 5653, very descriptive. And I'm in 20, we'll keep it default. Good, good standard thing to do. Oops, that's the wrong one. And uh, in the meantime, let's go ahead and just export some meshes we know we're going to have some problems with. So uh, this one is another. We would like to break that up a little bit. Uh, asset actions export. There we go. Um, fine with that chair for now. Might, yeah, might come around to that. If this, uh, yeah, we'll do this one as well. Asset actions export. There we go. I think that shadow could be a bit better. You can see there's all this down here that we don't need to be rendering. So we'll we'll bring that. You know, we we can just do it once because these are instances of the same thing. So if we just bring in the same mesh, uh, we'll be able to replace them both. Uh, and then I would like to maybe clean up this table a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And then this chair. Same thing. We can just do it once. Bring it in for all of them. Okay. And here we are in 3ds Max. We're going to find where that uh, FBX folder is, where we just exported all those meshes. Uh, FBX is, if you don't know, the... Um, kind of the standard Autodesk format for 3D files. It can carry a very large amount of information, so we're, we're going to keep with that as we go along. Um, Unreal can also use OBJ files, uh, or I believe DAE, perhaps. But um, I, like to, I like to just stick with the one. I'll just import everything in unison. Uh, that's not going to work, actually. All right, just do one at a time. So I like to uh, start by changing to the edged faces so we can kind of see how messed up the model is in the first place. And then I hit U to go to the orthographic view because I'm not a big fan of the perspective. It's uh, not too easy to turn around. I don't need the grid, so I'm going to hit G and disable that. Um, okay, so you can kind of see uh, one, of the, one of the ways that Unreal translates models is it will triangulate every 3D mesh that's imported. So before uh, before this was imported, this was probably one uh, one face. So like this cube here, uh, we have the one, two, three, four, five, six faces on here. If we were to import this into Unreal, uh, it would automatically change each face into a group of triangles. So this would become one, two, three, four, five, six times two faces. So uh, when we bring it back into 3ds max we're still having that triangulation here so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to convert this to an editable poly then i'm going to go up here to our geometry section and choose quadrify all and that'll do a pretty good job of getting rid of some of that triangulation and for some of the things we'll be doing we just want to get rid of as many uh, errant uh, lines and uh, problematic faces as we can so i'm going to try to select all of these leftovers here I'm, I'm being mindful not to grab the ones in the back because I don't want to mess with those quite yet. And then if I hit control backspace on the keyboard, you can delete all the faces that are not going to, uh, excuse me, uh, delete all of the lines that will not also delete faces, which is what we want. Okay, um, so again, what we're trying to do is break this into as many parts as we can to, to keep things with nice lighting and to get rid of parts that we don't really need to see. If we go back to where this mesh is, we do see the bottom side of this mesh, so we can't delete the floor, excuse me, the bottom half of this mesh uh, as much as I would love to. We could um, we could delete this, well, we see that side of the edge here, so we can't delete that. Um, okay, so I guess what we're going to have to do is just divide it a few times. So we're going to... Let's go up here, go down to our, uh, oops, select our faces. Sorry, I'm using a uh, mechanical keyboard today. I brought my other one to work and left it there. And it's a little bit clicky, isn't it? 
Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to detach uh, and, excuse me, split these different parts. Um, we know this, this section in here is all we're really concerned about, so I'm just going to make this one large section right here and then block off all that as well. And then uh, let's let's rotate over here. We'll make this one big section. How about right, right here? Let's do another there. And one more there. There we go. Okay. And next step, let's uh. Okay, so, yep. So we'll take each element here. And we're going to detach it, make it its own object. Same for this one. Detach. Thank you. And detach. Detach. So now this is the only element left in this object. And then we have a total of six objects here. So each one is going to get their own light map independently. Uh, so we're going to select all of these and uh, no we want to do them independently yeah here we go so we'll uh, choose each one export huh. floor one yep and these options let's uh, let's keep these as they are so smoothing groups we don't have any smoothing groups going on, so we're not concerned about that. Uh, triangulate, it'll do that on import anyway. Edge orientation, I'm not too concerned with that. Uh, we don't need animation. We don't need cameras. We don't need lights. We don't need audio. We don't want to embed media. Uh, that would include textures and materials. But we don't really have anything assigned in here anyway, so we're not too concerned with that. Um, so we'll go ahead and do the same thing here. So export selected. Same thing. Floor 2. And go ahead. Yep. And there's there's plugins to automate all of this, do it all very quickly. Uh, if we were taking advantage of DataSmith right now, we could just throw everything in there, um, bring them in the project at the same time. But it's it's good to uh, just show this part of the process too, nice and quick. It's important to note here too that uh, we're selecting each object and then choosing export just selected. And we'll know if we didn't do that. If we do, it, uh, it'll show a bigger file. And then also include all of the geometry in that one object. So there we go. We have all six floors here. And uh, let's go ahead and just reset. I'm not too concerned with saving. I can just re-import if I need to and switch back to our nice view here. Edge faces. I really need to set up a template for that, don't I? Uh, okay, let's go ahead and do the... Yeah, this is the next one. Okay, so this is that, um, that uh, this object right here that we have repeating a few different times in the environment. So we know we're never going to need to see this top part. We're never going to need to see the bottom part. And, uh, yeah, we can make it butt up right against the floor. That's fine. Um, yeah, but we'll need to see all the other sides of this object. Yeah. Okay, let's open up 3ds again. And same thing as before, convert to editable poly. If anyone has any uh, tips for this workflow, I would love to hear it. I'm not great with 3ds, so I'm just trying to uh, get by as I do. Uh, okay, so before we subdivide, here's a, here's a little trick. I, I like to uh, keep in mind. I'm just going to search for um, uh, architect uh, interior design walls. Yeah, close up. So remember when we're doing architectural visualization, nothing in reality is ever perfect, right? You're never going to have your perfect, perfect 90 degree edges like this here. Um, it, it's even even look around in your room right now. Look at the corners of the room and the walls. Uh, it's never just a, a flat zero to ninety degree angle. I mean that's that's just not realistic. And here they're, you know, that they can they can show it pretty close. It's you you get that bumpiness and uh, especially when it comes to walls and ceilings. Uh, anywhere there's a joint there, um, 
there there'll be a little bit of an angle, right? Like it's it's uh, <laughs> I'm doing an awful description here, but like yeah, right in here where you see that heavy ambient occlusion, uh, in reality you'd see it like it'd be very small, but there would be a ramp there, right? Like it would ramp from one from one angle to the other. Uh, and then if you look up here, this plane here would similarly not have a perfectly sharp, you know, touch it and you'll cut yourself sort of edge along there. It'd be a little bit bumpy. It'd be a little bit angled almost. So we're going to try to simulate that a little bit and we'll actually get uh, some really nice light when we do that too. So before we go ahead and... Um, subdivide here. We're going to select our four sides. Oh, even before that, let's uh, get rid of these. Select all faces, get rid of those four. So it's just the ends being selected. Uh, we're going to get rid of the ends because we don't need those. We, we're not going to light them. They're on the ground. Uh, and we're going to select these four sides. We're going to choose chamfer and we're just going to very, very delicately just add a very small, like nearly imperceptible chamfer to it. Yeah, okay. So it's, it's very small, uh, not enough that uh, it's going to look like a rounded edge, right? But it's going to be small enough that uh, it'll catch some lighting and look that much more realistic. This is one of those things that, you know, th this is one of those details that'll take you just the, the next level, right? Okay. So uh, before we subdivide again, um, we're going to have to fix our normals to account for that too. So we're going to go up here and choose Edit Normals. Yep. And what this will do is it... Uh, uh, let's, let's see if I can find a uh, edge M3. Yeah, show you what show you what we're doing here. So uh, here we have hard shading. This is what it would look like if we have our our uh, perfectly sharp edges, right? Like you can imagine touching that edge with the palm of your hand, it would almost hurt, right? If you were to smooth everything just automatically, it would it would take each point, each vertex and add a, a smoothing to it so then you get a very round you can look at the gradient on here it looks just like a like a sphere pretending to be a cube but instead what we can do is we can add this averaged uh, smoothing which would uh, uh, go off of the faces and average the normal for that and use that for the vertices i believe that is exactly what's happening here so we're going to select our face here and just choose average selected and same thing here it's it's again a a very small thing, but these small things all add up, right? Okay. And we're done there, so we'll choose Editable Poly again. Uh, did I miss a step? We we're supposed to smooth before we did that. No, we already did. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay. So now it's on to the subdividing, right? Okay. So let's take our slice plane. And slice. We can do a few of these. We know this is going to be going through floors, and uh, <laughs> one of the floors is going to have some pretty significant lighting, right? Okay, so um, what are we doing? Select by element. Select those. And we will detach. Object one, good. Detach, two, good. Detach, three, good. Okay, and this will be our fourth. So we'll go ahead and select this one. Export selected. Oh, what is this? Let's call it um, uh, tall shape. <laughs> okay, that's all good. Our second. Try not to skip any steps so you really understand uh, everything that's going on. And I hate to have one of the uh, one of those horrible draw the rest of the fucking owl sort of scenarios, right? All right, so here we are. We are back in our environment. Um, let's just get those two objects back in before anything else. So I like to make another folder in here just for meshes, and we'll we'll just um, bring our custom made meshes right in there. So I'll. Uh, drag our floors one through six, drag them right in. Okay. When you import a FBX, it's going to ask you about these standard settings you want. We're not going to worry about collisions. Uh, 
I, I like to keep those out until the very end, uh, especially if I'm doing anything with VR. I, I don't want to complicate the scene in any way that's going to throw off my, um, my, my environment design. Uh, generate light map UVs. We didn't do it in 3DS, so we do want to do it here. And we do not want to combine meshes. Uh, we don't have any generous to worry about, adjacency buffer, anything like that. Um, we're not doing anything with LODs right now, so we can ignore that. Uh, everything else should be pretty much set to default. Uh, we don't have any materials or textures to worry about, but we'll uh, leave that as is. Okay, and these are the, uh, oh, it even brought the, uh, the names too, interesting. Those are the uh, materials that were assigned previously, but... Um, not going to worry about that quite yet. So, uh, okay, let's, uh, we just brought them all in. We're going to control G to group them all. I'm going to go to this one here, the original floor. We're actually going to, where this location is, right click here and choose copy. Okay, and then grab our floor again. And this is grouped, so we're getting all six. And go up to your location, paste. And we are offset a little bit. Why are we offset? Why are we offset? I must have been offset in 3ds Max and I didn't account for it. Oh, Steve. Okay, so we're going to delete our old floor. We don't need that anymore. We'll just slide this into place. If you right click here, uh, go down to pivot and set pivot offset here. You can temporarily set a pivot point, which is really nice to do. Uh, it'd be nice if you could uh, get some some cleaner pivot manipulation here in Unreal. And I apologize for having that offset. I uh, did something wrong. Uh, and then if, if I were to click on the object again, notice that pivot snaps away. Uh, but if I right click, let's move our pivot again. And now if we right click that new location, oh dear. Right click, set pivot here, okay. And now if we, <laughs> if I do select it, you can choose set as pivot offset and it will permanently stay at that location. So it's a very nice thing to have when you're, when you're uh, uh, trying to change your pivots like that. Okay, let's, uh, let's do this object here then. Um, we have our floor. Uh, again, I'm hesitant to do anything with the materials textures. We'll, we'll get rid of those as soon as we can though. Um, Let's go to our FPX file here. Okay, these are our, our very carefully named tall shapes. Import all, please. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we have a few different instances of the same thing going on. We're really worried about these four or five shapes here, right? Um, that's probably the only time that it's used. Yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, okay, so before we drag them in, let's copy the location for this one. Okay, there's that one, and we will paste. Man, this one's offset too. Wait, I think I know what it is. I'm gonna group that real quick. Ah, <laughs> nope. I thought maybe I had an offset on here. Ah, damn. If you uh, if you keep the pivot, if this is correct in 3ds Max, ah, look, I did have it offset. Uh, if this is correct here, it should snap exactly to the right location. We'll we'll be sure to do that for the next couple objects that we do this with. Okay. So uh, we're just gonna drag that to the correct location. Let's hit H on the keyboard to hide that. So now we have this one to select. We'll just delete it and then Control H to unhide those. And we'll just drag that down. Oh, you know, before we do that, let's take this one, take the location, take that one, take the location. And uh, yeah, let's do that for the other ones and we'll just move them in unison, right? Let's get another one here. Copy and paste. Okay, so we know that this one, this one, and this one, those are the only ones. Yep, I feel like I'm missing one. <laughs> no, we're good. 
these are all offset by the same amount. So we're just going to move them together because we know they're all offset by the same six foot six whatever that I had so poorly forgotten to account for in 3ds max there we go okay that one's good get right on there great okay and then we'll just go in and delete those old ones I just hid my um, new objects delete and unhide there we go okay and uh, What, what did we have for the material? That that was the concrete, right? Uh, I believe it was the same as this. Yep, concrete cast in place. So I'm just going to select all these again. Yeah, concrete cast in place. And let's, let's just get rid of those extra material channels that we got going on here. There we go. Okay. So those are back. Notice it, it, it looks geometrically the exact same. Uh, since we... Uh, just detached. You can see maybe that's the... No, that's not the... Uh, you may be able to see the seam if our light map resolution is not large enough on the build, uh, which we could then increase. Um, but as it is now, uh, this is um, this is a much, much better solution for getting a good, good light map there. Okay, great. I really like that. Okay, so let's go on and do the next few objects, and we'll do it correctly this time, Steve. Don't save, okay. This is gonna be that wall, right? Okay. And here, ah, that's probably what I probably just moved the feet but not the inches, right? Okay. So we're at zero zero zero. With the graphic edge faces. And get rid of that grid. Thank you. And again, uh, edible poly. Let's quadrify all. And uh, these these spaces th for the doors, uh, we don't need to curve those faces or those edges at all, right? Because they're going to be covered by that mesh for the door frame. Uh, yep. If we look here, so these fit nightly, <laughs> nice and neatly in there. So we're not gonna we're not gonna touch that at all. We don't need to. Uh, what we do need to do is just subdivide it. Um, yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> Let's go to 3DS. Hello. There we go. Okay. And uh, before before we do that, we know we are not going to need to see the top of this. Oh, did I just make a boo-boo? Oh, I did. Oh, fun. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, so here's a here's a, here's a fun problem you get sometimes uh, when you do that quadrify all. Uh, so this, this top, we have these four corners, right? Uh, sometimes it will... Uh, subdivide in such a way that there is no line going along one of those edges. Uh, if we were to select all the faces for the top, we'll see that this has quite a bit of subdivision. And, uh, man, am I not orthographic? There we go. Uh, quite a bit of subdivision, and this can be really problematic when you're trying to delete faces and, and get rid of things you don't need. Yeah, you can see this this whole side of the top. If we do a straight top down view, is actually wrapped around the back of the object. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm just gonna take a step back here. I we don't need to um, get rid of those faces, so we're going to not worry about the triangulation. If it's already triangulated, it'll stay triangulated. I'm not gonna worry about it for this object. Just not in the mood, object 6093. Not today. All right, here we go again. Uh, so we have these faces. Let's do this in a quicker method, huh? So let's select this whole section and then unselect this section. So now all we have selected is that very top. Okay. And we're never, you're never going to see that part of the object, right? So we're just going to delete that. Get rid of it. Same thing for the bottom. And then unselect everything above it. And good. Unselect those. What we could do, I suppose, is get rid of uh, all these faces within the door frame. Um, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Good practice, huh? Okay. Let's grab those, unselect those, unselect those. Oops. Okay. Same with that. Okay, 
for one more. And I don't believe we uh, need this side at all, so we can go ahead and get rid of that. Same with this one here. Okay. And let's just go ahead and delete. So now the only faces we have are this half of the wall and then this half of the wall, right? So uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to just make that distinction first. So we see they're already broken into different elements. We'll take this side and we will simply detach it. Yep, there we go. And uh, let's, uh, which, which end is this? That's, this is, this is the end by where we were, right? Let's make sure. No, ah, okay. So this end is the one we want to be nice and pretty. So we'll uh, flip it around, okay. So our, our spot we were before is over here, right, okay. So um, this entirely can be its own object. If we delete it, yeah, okay. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and export this by itself. So we'll call this wall one. And you'll wanna be very careful with your naming conventions if you're, if you're uh, fiddling around with a lot of objects. Let's hide that so it's just out of the way. Uh, I, I could name it, you know, wall 6093 underscore one would, would probably be a better way to go about it, but we're only focusing on a small section, right? So this is only that one side of the wall. Uh, we're only, only concerned with how that's gonna look. Um, I would like to, what were you thinking, Steve? Who knows? Uh, let's make it a poly. Select all those faces again. Grab our slice plane. Oops. I like to turn on the snap up here so it snaps by five degree increments. Let's do 90 degrees, yeah, thank you. And slice away. Is this the right thing, the right way to do things? Probably not, but it works. <laughs> Gets the job done. There's probably more optimized ways to do this. Um, again, I'm, I'm, I'm showing the way that I do it and, and the way I get my results. Uh, I'm always happy to learn, happy to teach new things. So again, if you, if you have a really good method for this and uh, navigating through 3ds Max, I would love to hear it. Uh, I'm always happy to learn these things. Okay, so we have our last object here. We have one, two, three, four, five sections of the wall. Uh, let's let's show what's going on with the light maps, shall we? So, let's let's take this uh, this recognizable part of the wall right here. Okay, so all of the faces that we have are you know subdivided right here, and what we want to do is light all of those as well as we can with as much resolution as possible. So if we select all of these, we're going to make our own light map very quickly. So if we select them, go down in 3DS to unwrap UVW. And it's important to note this step is what happens automatically in uh, Unreal. Uh, and with Datasmith, this happens automatically as well. So our first channel here is always going to be in 3DS Max, our color. Uh, and if we go to channel two, this will be our light map, our light UV channel. So we're gonna select a UV channel two, open our UV editor. And we see this is all that we got. Uh, if we had the whole object in here before, this is probably as much resolution it was as it was taking. Let's keep that. Yeah, I'm on two screens. Sorry, guys. Uh, if we pull it up in here, let's go to our UV channel too. So uh, if you look on, on the light map generated in Unreal, that one part was probably about that big, right? So it was getting a really small share of all of the lighting information because it was so itty bitty. So what we can do instead is if we divide it up like this, we can make that take up as much space as possible. So what I like to do to automate it, go up to mapping, flatten mapping, and we can, we can keep these default. 
we can let it rotate because uh, the way the shadow falls on it, we're not worried about rotation. Fill holes, sure, it doesn't matter. Boom, look how much space this is taking up now, right? This is, this is taking up, what, 10 times more space, more resolution, 10 times the lighting information we get on that single mesh. That's fantastic. So if we can make this happen for every mesh, we're, we're gonna have some really nice shadows on those walls. So again, we don't need to do that. It'll happen automatically when we import. Uh, Unreal has gotten really nice with their um, automate, automated uh, UV, excuse me, UV light map generation. Let's make this wall two. I think they've made some, some, uh, some nice uh, improvements in the background that haven't really been recognized. Either that or I've just uh, recognized things and learned more about UVs on my own. Oops, want it to be the whole object, right? And remember, this is u zero, 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 so it should snap to the right location when we import it. Hello, wall five. And lastly, wall six. Okay, go back to Unreal here. And let's uh, go back to our meshes folder and import those. Walls one through six. Notice uh, wall one is that backside and it's a little bit bigger, but the other ones still carry a lot of information. Uh, when we import it this time, let's let's get rid of the materials and textures. We don't need that bloat. Uh, convert. Yeah, okay. Should be good. Import all. Let's copy the location and paste the location. All right, there we go. <laughs> I'm scaring myself a little bit. Uh, let's group it, select the, well, hide it. Select this one, unhide it. There we go. Get that golden wheat back on here. You can already see some of those shadows, how, how nice those look. Uh, okay, in the backside. And again, we're not worried about that back whatsoever. I'm going to ungroup it and let's uh, get the last one here. Let's look at this uh, light map that came in here. If we open this up, go to yeah, UV channel one. This is the one that we made, right? You can see what that looks like, how much space is taking. Uh, this is their custom made one. And you see they have a little bit of gap here around the edge. That helps to get rid of some light leaking and some extra shadows that uh, that we don't like to show up. Mine is just flush. So we're going to go with the three um, that they generated. And if we wanted to double check, we can go down here to, where is it? If we drop down uh, general settings, we can see light map coordinate index. This is the one it's going to use by default right now. We do want it to be that one. So UV channel three there. If anything, if you ever bring in a mesh and it looks like uh, it has black and white boxes all over it and you're not sure what's going on with your shadows, uh, check to make sure that option is correct. Again, I'll, I'll show you, it's, it's important. Uh, so we go down here, drop down under general settings, this arrow, light map coordinate index here. And you want it to be your nice, clean, big light map there. Okay. And, uh, all right, so we had a couple more meshes. These are important to do. Again, as, as much time as you can spend uh, in 3ds Max or whatever your 3D modeling program is, before you get to Unreal, the better off you'll be. If you can get all of this uh, data translated correctly before you even need to worry about it, save yourself some time. Okay, zero that out. Orthographic, no grid, thank you. And edge faces, okay. So uh, here you can see that triangulation really at play here. Uh, this could be a problem for us. Um, you know, I'm gonna wanna round this edge, so we're gonna need to get rid of a lot of that. So let's, let's go ahead, let's convert it to a poly. And let's be mindful that we're not gonna lose any information on these edges here, right? So when we quadrify, yep, there we go. You can see what it did there. So as soon as we quadrified, it thought this line was part of the triangulation. 
and you can see it again watch watch this line here it'll just get rid of that entirely so now there's it, it thinks there's just a very round face i suppose so we're not gonna be able to do that uh if we could select this yes okay here we go so select, select this element um okay select a straight front view select all of the edges relevant to that and then we'll select deselect those damn That's not gonna be easy. Okay, select those. Select those two. Um, trying to get rid of all those lines on the very top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, let's uh, go up to our edge selection. And again, if we hit Control Backspace, it'll get rid of a bunch of those. Uh, the reason we're doing this is so we can edge or make a nice round edge on this table, so it it actually looks comfortable to use. It's a it's an important design consideration, especially when it comes to level design, that you um, make your habitable spaces look like you may want to inhabit them. Part of that means. Uh, you know, ma making comfortable spaces actually appear comfortable. And, and part of that is that your edges don't look violent. <laughs> they don't look like they'll cut you when you sit down. Again, a, a, a little small touch that goes a long way. You can fast forward like... <laughs> 20 seconds if, you, if you're uh, ahead of the game here. Looks like that's about all of them. So let's uh, get rid of those. Now the only edges we should have on the top are those. Great. And we'll select our faces again, unhide all of them. Okay. So now if we were to uh, make a nice edge on here, we wouldn't have that fracturing that would come from all those edges that would be getting in the way. Furthermore, we have all of these edges down here. I would like to, man, everyone can relate to that. You know, you, you hit the table leg and suddenly your leg is on fire and just your your day is ruined everything is just gone to hell it's uh, unbelievable if only the 3d developer had just gotten rid of some of that hard edge make it a little bit more cozy up in here Select all those. Ah, oh, son of a... Hmm. This is fine. This is fine. Let's just select all those. Okay, so let's select that. Let's select that. This is probably the worst part of uh, bringing models in from Revit is is the way that uh, 3ds Max and and Unreal both try to compress the model in their their own nice, unique, clever ways that just cause causes problems for people like us, right? So let's be sure we get all the trying all the lines that we need, and we don't get the lines that we don't want. Okay. 
I'm glad I did include that cafeteria because that's a that's an important thing to talk about doing furniture. Okay, get rid of those. Looks like we had a yep, we accidentally got that one here. Get rid of those. We forgot these two. Okay, so we should have four lines for each leg. Great. And we do have those bottoms. Again, we don't need those. We're not going to need to light the uh, bottoms of the uh, table here. If we really wanted to, we could go crazy and delete the, you know, well, we can delete uh, height selection here. Oops. Uh, we, can, we can delete these top faces here. Um, we, we could delete any face we're pretty sure the user is never going to see, but... You know, when, when you get some VR users in a headset, um, some people like to break things. Uh, I've seen some users crawl under tables and see how much detail I, I decide to keep in there. I, I'd hate for someone to have the satisfaction to think that we deleted the bottom half of a table. Of course, it's not high poly or anything, but some people just want to be clever. Can't have that. All right, uh, let's keep those hard these edges here uh, just just for a little contrast and uh, also because I don't want to do any more of that um, yeah but these we should we should do ah fuck it okay <laughs> let's move on let's move on uh, let's uh, select this if we hold control and select that we'll select all the connecting faces again let's chamfer that a little bit just a little bit you know, let's do more than a little bit. Ah, we can't do much. We'll see some artifacting from those those little edges there. So let's keep it nice, nice and easy. Okay. And select these faces. And these faces. Sorry, edges. And same thing, sham for those. Let's give it a little variety, go maybe a little bit more oh dear what are you doing here oh son of a mm. we deleted a line that we were not supposed to so what do we do here's what we do so you select this one um, let's go up to where is it edge cut hit s to snap choose that one to that one there we go we now have our edge again took me altogether too long to figure that one out so that one's for free <laughs> Okay, um, all right, so got those selected. Let's hit S again, get rid of our snap. Chamfer, there we go. Yeah, that's nice. I, I do, this is, uh, uh, you did it again, Steve, over there too. Uh, cut. Look at all this practice we're getting, huh? There we go. One more time, huh? I sort of like the, um, Yeah, I, I want you to see these struggles. <laughs> it's an important part. Yeah, maybe we have to get rid of those lines too. Get rid of those. Okay, so only lines we want are these and these. We're not going to worry about those ones in the middle. Those seem to be causing problems. Okay, and one more time. <laughs> I love that we're spending so much time on that when uh, no one's ever going to notice, right? But we'll know. Oh, yeah, we'll know. Okay, so we're good here. Uh, we have everything nice and clean. Uh, and you notice before in our, in our model, uh, when we had those built, 
we got these shadows inside, and I'm pretty sure that was from the, uh, the this top face that was the, the top of this box, right? I, I think that was receiving a shadow that was then transmitting through that table there. So now that we've deleted that, and we have that edge, and we have some more detail down here, we'll get some much, much better lighting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take my snipping tool. I'm just going to snip and uh, set a control three. So that's our third viewpoint, just so we can use that for reference here when we rebuild our lighting. Okay. And um, I'm happy with this. I'm going to go ahead, auto smooth everything. Remember before what we did with our uh, normals? Go up here, edit normal. Okay. Select that top face and average. Okay, we're good. We'll export, and uh, what was this called? 6630. Yes, replace it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do the chair, and uh, we'll pick up after that. All right, hello again. Uh, we're back. I just uh, I, I did what we did for that table, uh, and then I did the same for the chairs here. So uh, here it is imported. You can see I added uh, some smoothing. Uh, oh, that's a nice problem. Uh, some some little details around the edges here. Uh, ultimately, I'd probably want to make it more like a cushion, but you can kind of see, kind of going for like a plasticky, almost rubbery kind of look on there. Uh, got rid of some triangles we don't need and so on. Um, things are looking good. So before, uh, we took this snip. This is a, a good little trick to keep up your sleeve. Took a snip of the scene uh, before made any changes to the tables, to the chairs, anything like that. I also went ahead and made some changes to the light build, and I'll go over those changes, and then I rebuilt everything. And here's where we are after that. So if we go to a side-by-side, -side, you can you can see we got rid of those problems on the tables. That's great. Uh, there was that problem, which we're assuming was a uh, face on the bottom side of the table, casting a shadow through the top of the table. Uh, kind of hard to tell with those things sometimes. Uh, these chairs, um, we, we added some details there, but again, it's kind of hard to see <laughs> anything with them. They're, uh, all of those curves and those edges are kind of small, so... Let's go ahead and close that snip. I'm happy with that. Uh, looks like I forgot to add smoothing to this table. So before the end, I would uh, go in, auto smooth everything, re-import it, and then uh, rebuild the light. But um, we're pretty close there. Uh, I like that we have the edge, but honestly, um, we're not going to see much of a difference. Uh, again, one of those little small things. This one I left deliberately the same as before. What, what I did is... Um, I took every single one of these table dining round here, yep, selected all of those, and then replaced that uh, that mesh for all of them with this new mesh that we have now. So if we go into uh, 6630 is what we're, what we're calling it here, um, I just replaced all of them with that new mesh that we had imported. So if I just go over here and go there. And it's important to note, this is good for your optimization as well. If you have uh, 20 references to the same object instead of 20 unique references to different objects, you're going to have less overhead ultimately in the end. So that's a good thing to keep in mind. I'm just going to hide this. Yeah, it looks like there's uh, two floors here that are coplanar. And you can kind of see uh, it popped in and out a couple times there. Uh, that's because it is sharing the same Z space. So one thing we might want to do... Uh, let's let's see what's going on here. It, it's actually identical. If you look at the, it's floor concrete. Um, there's a. This is just on top of it. So, uh, I'm going to hide that, and I'm going to delete this floor concrete because that's just going to get in the way. We know that it, it's the same Z space, just going to cause problems. Uh, okay, so these meshes are good. Um, what we should have done too, we can see these chunky shadows here. We should have broken up this floor as well. You notice this is just one huge thing. Um, I don't know if we'll come back to that. It's it, it's repetitive to do that, but let's focus on that top floor element for now. You can see we have uh, some unique shadow problems here now. Uh, this, this is telling me that this uh, light map resolution is too low, so there's a fix for that. Uh, let's look at these pillars that we brought in. Yeah, okay, look at this. So we got some nice crisp shadows here along the edges, right? We have this here, which is uh, trying to get shadow information from this. 
if we go to our light map view again, we can see that light map is a bit small. So if we were to increase that as well as increase this, uh, we'd, we'd get some better results. Again, same thing here. We get really nice shadows from here and from that bar there, that mullion. Uh, I really love the way this light is turning out. We get a really nice light cast down as well as up, and we can see the nice light shooting up out of there. Uh, yeah, that, that looks really nice on that table there. These lights I'm happy with as well, uh, aside from the shadows. Let's switch to our lighting only. We can see exactly what's going on here. We get a really nice light cast up and out and uh, to the bottom as well. Let's look at these lights we have up here. Uh, nothing. <laughs> we don't see anything. They are too dark. Um, if we were to just fly along the floor here, you can see some lighter spots. But uh, we're not really getting much light from those. But honestly, I'm okay with that. Uh, we, we get this skylight. I, I want it to be mostly exterior lit. Um, I like this, uh, this grid we get on the wall at the end. That's really nice. I like the shadows we get on these pillars, too. That's, that's very cool. Okay, so uh, this is black. We don't want it to be black. We want it to be this concrete, right? So let's go ahead and start applying some materials. Let's, let's search first for concrete, see if we have anything here. So these are all of our pre-made, poorly named materials here. Um, you know what? Let's go into our starter content. If you go to maps, let's go to... Is it this one? Yes, this one. Let's open our starter map here. We can see all the materials that we have laid out from the starter content. Take some beer in the meantime. Mm -mm. All right. This is what came in from the starter content. So first of all, we can see some particle effects here. Uh, I don't think we'll really use some sparks or hopefully fire or smoke anything in here. Uh, we could if we really wanted to. This is kind of a cool thing if you hit play uh, or simulate. Hello. There was audio. <laughs> if we... You can see there, uh, it actually simulates the, uh, the gravity and the physics. It's, that's kind of cool. Uh, good to tear apart at some point. But you can see uh, these materials we brought in. So... Uh, we're not going to use stone brick, we're not going to use clay, uh, what else do we got? Cobblestone, maybe for the exterior, this might be nice. I uh, like this smooth cobblestone. Uh, this grimy concrete is pretty cool, but um, a bit too too grimy for us, yep. Uh, panels of concrete, that's kind of nice. This poured concrete, we could we could use that. We'll, we'll probably end up using that for our interior space. Uh, grass, gravel, moss... A lot of metallic. This is that chrome we used before, and that copper that we have on our railings that we still haven't fixed. If you zoom in, you can see so much detail. That's nuts. Um, I like that burnished steel as well. I'd like to use maybe uh, maybe this polished walnut for those tables on the second floor, or that top floor. You can see uh, animation on a material as this changes here. That panel's kind of nice. Yeah, that water is nice, but no way we'll use that. Ceramic tile, no, won't use that. Okay, so we're going to use this uh, uh, poured concrete here. So we'll find it in our browser, it's just right there, starter content materials. Okay, we know where it is. We'll just uh, head back to our map that we're using. And let's not save, we don't, we don't need to. And we were in our materials. <laughs> come on, Steve, come on. Okay. M concrete port. I'm going to uh, go ahead and duplicate this, and we're going to call it M concrete poured data smith. And I'm going to move this to our uh, to my materials folder I made previously. Great. Okay. So here we go. Uh, we have that poured concrete. Uh, you can already see some problems that we're going to have here. This is not um, not how you say good <laughs> for an interior surface. Uh, let's let's apply it to all of our floors first. You can see it's kind of just glossing over some of those seams, but you still get a little bit with the material. Um, I'm not going to worry about that though. It's almost a bit realistic. Maybe we'd have like some sort of uh, reveal between those. Maybe that would be more real. Maybe it'd be like a, a small thing. Uh, and you can actually see those chunky shadows pop into place too, huh? Great. Okay, we'll fix that. All right. Uh, 
So uh, I did have a crash after I built my lighting. Um, that's not typical. That's that's on me and my uh, computer. Uh, but here's what I did. So by default, your static lighting level scale is at one, and your number of indirect lighting bounces at I believe two, two or three, one or uh, low. Same with this one for your sky lighting. Uh, that's new, by the way. Uh, indirect lighting quality is at one, same as the lighting smoothness, I believe. So what I did uh, is I turned down our static lighting level scale. And what that what that tells Unreal, as I understand it, is that, um, let's see, uh, UE4, sorry, mechanical keyboard. Uh, we can see um, the, uh, the, the difference that 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 makes it you're telling unreal the 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 size of the of the scene that you're trying to focus on so if you're if you're building a small scene um you, you'd keep that very small value but if it's a large scene like an exterior of a building you you could go maybe two or so this is a example just side by side so this is scale one with the smoothness down to 0.25 uh, you can see all the artifacting that happens in here due to the lack of smoothness and here it is turned up to scale of 0.1 uh, keep in mind that a lower value for the scale means uh, more complexity so you can see much more uh, density for for uh, how the light is bouncing around the scene uh, let's look at this one too yeah you can see a lot of that artifacting in the corners so there there is a trade-off and it's a very fine balance and no two scenes are the same so when it comes to these values you're always going to have to try different iterations and so on uh, important thing to remember with your static lighting level scale is that value multiplied by your indirect lighting quality should always equal one I'll say that again because it's important. This value, static lighting level scale, multiplied by indirect level, <laughs> multiplied by indirect lighting quality should always equal one. So 0.5, so I did two. Uh, our number of indirect lighting bounces and for skylight, light, sky lighting bounces, uh, that I'd say if you turn it up more than 10 or 15, you're never going to notice a difference. It's uh, pretty arbitrary, but it will increase your build times as you go up. Um, and then your lighting smoothness, that's going to uh, get rid of a lot of artifacting that you see in corners. Let's see if we can find some of that. Um, so we did, we did turn that up from the default of one, but uh, maybe, maybe it would be getting rid of things like this. Maybe that would be more jagged uh, without it. Uh, maybe, let's, let's go down here. Yeah, we, we can't really find any, any more of that. Interesting that the shadows are about the same level of quality for um, being separate light maps. So here's how I'll increase this. And I'll, I'll probably do another lighting build and take a break and we'll come back after that. But I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and fix some of these uh, light maps first while we're right here now. So if we open up the static mesh, double click that, there we go. And we go down to our UV channel three. This is the very nice one that we have from before. If we look at our other values, we have UV channel two. This is bad because it's not, we have all this empty space that's not giving us any information. Same with this one, UV channel one, UV channel zero, that's our material. And it's fine if it looks like that, that's not gonna cause any problems at all. If we scroll down here, uh, yes, our light map coordinate index is to three, which is what we want it to be. That's our nice big UV map. And if we, um, we are, uh, let's see, go to our build settings. When we, these are, these are the um, values we had uh, when we imported this FBX in the first place. So we did choose to generate those light maps, which is good. We do have it on three, uh, but by default, it's using a resolution of 64. So let's turn that up to, um, I'm gonna do 256. Uh, some friends of mine have said you can turn that up to 1024, 2048. Keep those values power of two as well, or you'll have some problems down the line. So 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024, 2048, uh, and no higher than that. But 256, uh, it's the floor, floor and ceiling. You can usually get away with a nice bigger value like that. And we know we'll be here anyway, so that's fine. So we just rebuilt that light map and it was 64 pixels across and now it's 256 across. Uh, but then if we go down here to our light map resolution, it's by default 
overriding that with 64. We don't want that, so we're going to turn that up to 256 as well. So it's going to match that value we just put in. We'll hit save. And let's, uh, let's do that same thing for this floor. Open that up. And again, 256, apply, 256, save, close. We'll do this one too. 256, apply, 256, save. Last one. Okay, great. And you'll see that uh, those shadows are now uh, these are dynamic, so we'll have to rebuild our lighting. You see the lighting needs to be rebuilt uh, for those objects. This, uh, I'm, I'm fine with this being out here. We're not going to go over here. And aside from that, we don't see any shadows here either. Uh, for that matter, let's open this one up. And let's, uh, let's go down to our generator light map UV. Let's turn it down. Uh, let's do 32, so it'll, it'll be less of our compute, right? Okay. 32 here as well okay and we're gonna save I'm gonna go ahead and do this wall and then do another light build and we'll be right back oops <laughs> 